Welcome to Your Questions Answered, where I try to answer your questions related to health and nutrition. For those of you who are new, I'm Ryan Taylor, a nutritionist from the United Kingdom. In this video series, you can ask me questions and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can related to health and nutrition. I recently put a post on my community page asking for your questions, and I'm actually very pleased to say that we've had over 100 comments, which is really amazing. So I'll do my best to answer as many as I can as we go through this video. This is the first Q&A video on the channel, so please bear with me as we start to weave this new format together. Before I dive into the questions, I have to remind you that this video is not designed to diagnose or treat any medical problems that you may have, and it's purely for informational purposes only. Please speak with your doctor about any medical concerns that you may have. Now, that's my disclaimer, so let's get started with the first question of the day. Can potassium citrate be continuously used for potassium? Are there any side effects of it? Um, well, as far as I'm aware, you can use potassium regularly, as I do personally take it on a regular basis with a blend of other electrolytes. Some people do experience some diarrhoea, however, when they take too much, uh, and um, in some circumstances where you have kidney damage, you may want to limit potassium, otherwise it seems to be well tolerated, and it's very good for keeping your blood sugar stable and things like that. Another question says, if we fast, do we need to take salt in the morning? Yes, uh, you should be taking a little salt in the morning when you're fasting. It won't actually break your fast, but it will give you energy. You need more salt when you are fasting, you see, as your body dumps more water and loses its electrolytes, like sodium, which is salt. What are the sources of zinc? Well, many of the soils that we're growing our food in are now depleted of zinc. So it's best to actually try and get it from the ocean, foods that grow in the ocean like shellfish, mussels, crab meat, oysters, shrimp, kelp, all great sources. You can also get zinc from things like pumpkin seeds, but it's best to sprout the seeds first so that you can absorb more of the zinc because they contain phytic acid which can bind to it. What is the best quality immune boosting supplement for kids? Please cover kids health. Thank you, Ryan. Um, when it comes to kids and you're looking to keep them healthy, vitamin D is vitally important. So if the kids don't go outside too much, you may want to get a good vitamin D3 formula for children. I'd also focus on natural vitamin C to help them to build their immune system against all the pathogens that are out there, ideally from things like rose hips, camu camu, which you can put in a drink for them or even a capsule. Is inflammatory bowel disease curable? If you have this problem, it can be reversed, I'd never say cured, but you can improve the health of your bowel by fixing your diet, following a low carb plan, and ideally you want to go on the carnivore diet for two months or so, cutting out all of the grains and fibre to help the gut to heal. Taking glutamine powder is another thing that comes to mind. I do have a video on the, the top five drinks to repair an inflamed colon, so you may want to find that on the channel. Uh, the sixth question I've got is schizophrenia causes and treatment. This is a difficult one. There, there, there are a lot of different theories, but it's been shown that there is a problem with a certain enzyme in the brain which causes a buildup of a toxic byproduct of adrenaline. This toxin causes hallucination, paranoia, things like that that are associated with schizophrenia. Uh, taking a large dose of niacin, which is vitamin B3, may help the situation. And also vitamin C can help with this as well. Again, natural sources of vitamin C like rose hips, camu camu, acerola cherry, these can help. But please speak with your doctor again as these are not medical recommendations. Just a starting point for your own research. A signpost, if you will. So uh, next we have, um, what advice do you give to a senior citizen on a very low income to buy nourishing foods to stay healthy? Very good question. Um, with age, the body breaks down and it tends to lose protein. So you want to focus on eating ground beef when you can. Low fat if it's conventional, or if you can afford grass fed, go for the one that's higher in fat. This actually ends up being a lot cheaper than eating lots of grains and breads and cereals, which actually make you hungry and, and you end up spending more money. Red meat can actually nourish your body, keep your muscles strong, 
Alternatively, you can get beef liver, which is very, very cheap. Organ meats are so nutritious, and they're actually some of the most nutritious foods on the planet. Um, also, canned sardines are loaded with nutrition and omega-3 fats, which will keep the inflammation at bay with age. Also very, very cheap. It's how hormones change your face. Um, hormones are responsible for a lot of different changes in the body. Uh, insulin, for example, too much of it can cause you to retain water and make your face more puffy. High estrogen can also have the same effect, and it can weaken your blood vessels that are supplying the blood to the face, so you may get like um, pale skin, looking very anemic. There are so many different hormones that can affect the person's face shape, actually. Thanks, God bless, Amen. You're most welcome. I see you commenting a lot. Thanks for the support. And um, is atrophic gastritis curable? Again, we never want to say curable, but uh, most conditions are reversible when you follow a proper diet. Gastritis can be very painful. It's often triggered by alcohol, aspirin, uh, taking um, painkillers, uh, or an overgrowth of a bacteria called H. pylori. Zinc carnosine is quite helpful for reversing this condition because it can help to restore the stomach lining and also raw manuka honey can kill that bacteria that I talked about. And the next question is, um, during the day, when should D3 and K1 be taken? How much and when to take copper and a cranberry supplement? First of all, D3 is best to take it with vitamin K2, not K1. These are very distinctively different vitamins. I like to take the combination with my first meal of the day. As the nutrients are fat soluble, eating a little fat with them will help to trigger bile release from your um, gallbladder, helping you to absorb them. With the copper, you can take that whenever you like, it doesn't really matter, um, as far as I'm aware. And cranberry works best on an empty stomach if you're trying to remedy something like a urinary tract infection. Uh, question number 12, how do I truly get rid of high-pitched screaming tinnitus inside my head? Well, the main thing with tinnitus is it's often caused by uh, this food additive called monosodium glutamate, or MSG. Uh, it, it's all in the fast foods, the takeout foods, boolean cubes, packaged foods. They add it to give a nice flavour to hide out bad these foods actually taste without it um so you want to start cutting that back you can also take taurine i believe this helps with tinnitus uh the best multivitamins for women age 39 thank you and god bless well thank you very much um multivitamin blend supplements tend to be quite weak as they're usually using synthetics uh, i don't really like them they don't really have much of an effect other than toxicity uh, so try to get most of the nutrients from your food if you can, eating large salads, dark leafy greens, organ meats, fish. But in terms of a supplement, you may want to take a good digestive enzyme supplement that also contains ox bile and betaine hydrochloride as you begin to go over the threshold of 35, 40, 50, etc. Uh, the next question says, have you written a book on all health issues that you talked about? No, I haven't written a book yet. Um, I've had a lot of comments asking a similar question. It may be on the horizon in the future, but at the moment I spend most of my time researching and making these videos. I am working on another project which isn't to do with nutrition, and it may include a book. Um, this is relating to poetry and understanding some deeper observations of the mind and life. Um, I'll definitely post this on the channel when we get there with that project, but may take some time. In terms of health and nutrition, however, I would like to find the time in the future to condense a lot of these videos and works that I've done into a nice book that's easy to read. Number 15, uh, what do you recommend for autism? For autism, uh, you want to focus on eating omega-3 fatty acids, specifically DHA and EPA from things like virgin cod liver oil, oily fish, salmon, mackerel, sardines. DHA and, e um, DHA and EPA have been shown in different studies to improve neuroplasticity in the brain, and this can help to build new connections and deal with things like autism and improve some of the symptoms. 
Advice on how to boost low ferritin iron stores would be much appreciated. First of all, avoid, avoid, avoid the elemental iron tablets that they often give you at the pharmacy. They simply don't get absorbed well. They're, they're very elemental and they're not bound to a protein, so they can cause liver damage and oxidation. It's best that you load up on dark red meats, organ meats again, liver, grass-fed beef, lamb. You can also try drinking some apple cider vinegar mixed in water as this can help your stomach to absorb more of the iron from the food. But most of all you need to know that animal based heme iron is the best absorbed for healthy blood. Next we have Nan's Global Kitchen. Hi Ryan, good morning, how are you? I'm great, thank you very much. Uh, my question is why do I have this feeling of fullness, gassy, bloated and constantly burping? Uh, I also feel weak in my leg muscles, I get high BP and dizziness from vertigo, I have no gallbladder and have had a complete hysterectomy after no care advice etc for both surgeries. Any reply would be greatly appreciated, God bless. Right, um, firstly the feeling that you're getting in your stomach is most likely caused by low stomach acid and a bile deficiency. Especially if you've had your gallbladder removed, this is probably the case of bile deficiency. Uh, taking a bile supplement um, in the form of uh, bile acid factors or a supplement called Tudka, which is conjugated taurine, or um, uh, a good digestive enzyme blend which contains ox bile, that would be very good. High blood pressure and dizziness could be a range of different things. Uh, it's usually a potassium deficiency or even just dehydration. A lot of people forget to drink water because they're drinking too much coffee and tea. Um, also managing your stress. So yes, um, manage your stress, drink more water, take a bile supplement of some kind, maybe some digestive enzymes. What can I do to get rid of clustered acne that's reoccurring? Uh, clustered acne is usually a hormonal problem where there's too much androgens in the body, uh, the male hormone. Uh, fasting is one of the best ways to get these uh, under control. Also, lowering the amount of sugar and the carbohydrates that you eat can clear up the skin as well. Taking milk thistle or anything bitter that cleans the liver will balance the hormones as well and clear up the skin. Next up we have uh, fertility health for over 30 male and female. Uh, what comes to mind is uh, taking a chelated zinc supplement. Uh, this can keep the reproductive organs working properly in particularly men but also in women. Uh, eating lots of fruit if you're not on keto. Uh, if you are on keto or a low carb diet, try to eat some berries every day to keep your antioxidants high like raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, etc. Uh, one or two cups of these a day is very effective. The vitamin C that's in fruit can nourish the reproductive fluids and keep all of these systems in check. Also vitamin E and um, watermelon seeds come into mind to improve fertility. 20. Uh, question. Causes of Graves' disease and how to put it in remission. Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism, overactive thyroid, can have quite a few different causes. Um, particularly gluten in the diet and damage in the gut can cause the body to start attacking a certain protein that's in the thyroid itself, uh, causing this problem. You may want to take a higher dose of selenium, uh, even vitamin B1. With thyroid problems, you want to focus really on improving the health of the liver. This usually helps to balance out the hormone ratios as well. So again, a low carb diet, bitter foods, intermittent fasting, selenium, milk thistle, uh, drinking lots of water. Question. I'm taking multiple vitamins, 50 plus, and it has biotin. Um, my dermatologist said I need to take 5,000 milligrams due to my diagnosis of candida in my left hand nails and is my candida inside my body? Thank you very much. Candida usually overgrows in the body and it can spread into the nails where there's too much sugar in the blood or high levels of insulin. Um, you may need to improve your diet. Uh, fasting again can help. You can treat the nails themselves by applying a mixture of baking soda and um, Vicks Vapor Rub every single day. Uh, this will starve the fungus. 
I've actually got a couple of videos dedicated to overcoming candida overgrowth, so uh, you may want to check these out. Uh, you can search Ryan Taylor Natural Remedies Candida into YouTube and you should find them. What advice do you have to boost your immune system for the fall and winter seasons? Garlic, uh, oregano, raw honey, they're probably my three favourite immune boosters. You can mix them all together in a jar and ferment the garlic and then just eat one clove a day in the winter with honey. Uh, I like to eat lots of raw basil as well on a salad. If you do start to feel under the weather, you could get wild oregano oil in little gel capsules. Um, you can take these through the winter to keep your immune system high and speed up the white blood cells. Uh, again, we have another question that says, do you have a book that has everything on your website? Again, I don't have a book currently, um, but I would like to write one in the future if I could spare the time. Um, me and my wife, Hannah, we spend an enormous amount of time producing these videos as they're made literally slide by slide using about three different types of software. It can be very time consuming, but it is worth it. Um, there's a lot of channels popping up on YouTube using AI and um, artificially written blogs and uh, voiceovers and things like that. But we're trying to stay true to the cause and keep it original. Um, coming back to uh, the questions now, um, why is it that it becomes hard for pills and tablets to pass through the esophagus into the stomach as a person grows older? Well, this happens mostly due to acid reflux. As you get older, your stomach acid gets weaker and there's this little valve at the bottom of the esophagus which opens up and acid starts to flick upwards. Um, from the stomach into the esophagus and this can make it very tight, inflamed, it can even get webbed in some people and the pills get stuck. Um, zinc carnosine is good to help with this to heal the esophagus and, and uh, repair the inflammation and also fixing stomach acid by taking some betaine hydrochloride or apple cider vinegar can keep digestion working properly. You, you can find more info on this on my video that I made last year which has got over 5 million views called 5 Vitamins to um, Stop Acid Reflux. Uh, that video has all the info you need on that. And um, for the 25th question, um, I'll do a few more uh, after this one. This one says a natural treatment for jaundice, please. Jaundice is usually caused by severe liver damage and um, it can sometimes be caused by eating too much carrots as well as the orange pigment comes through the skin but usually it's a liver problem speak with your doctor if you have jaundice uh, immediately because it is it is a dangerous state where the liver isn't filtering out bilirubin properly but uh, you can improve your liver health by doing things like timed eating which is intermittent fasting taking a milk thistle supplement uh, and eating lots of bitter foods drinking lots of water so yes uh, moving on to uh, Question 26, and I said I will do a few more. I'm having fun. Uh, pairing few, pairing foods. Are there foods that benefit from eating them together? Are there fruits or veggies that are best paired together for snacks or juicing? Uh, nutritionally, not the taste. Absolutely. Um, one of the things about nature, which is very fascinating, is humans developed hunter-gatherers. So we evolved to eat a mixture of plant matter and also animal protein. A lot of the um, nutrients that you find in plants, the uh, carotenoids, the antioxidants, the minerals, they, they, they get better absorbed in your body when you actually eat fat with them. So you could either pair your salads with olive oil, for example, that'll help you to get more nutrition. Proteins and fats should be together. You shouldn't be eating very lean meats. Uh, as this is very hard on the liver, but when you eat protein with fat, it goes down very well, it's easily digested, your blood sugar stays stable. So focusing really on eating whole foods, not processed foods like wheat and flour and grains, things that have been through 12-step processes like sugar. Focusing really on eating whole foods like meat, fish, eggs, salad, vegetables, 
pairing them all together in a nice balanced plate of food, this is a really good way to go when it comes to combining things. Um, the same thing with juicing. One of the problems with juicing is you often take the fiber out and the, this causes your blood sugars to spike because of the sugar that's in the fruit or the vegetables that you're juicing. So that's why I like to have smoothies instead. Uh, these are much more better for your blood sugars. And so, yeah, whole foods. Another question says the role of choline in the body. Choline has many, many different functions. Um, mostly it's involved with creating bile salts, and these help you to digest fats, uh, bile that's released from the liver, and then into the gallbladder, and then into the small intestine when you eat. So it's very important for keeping the liver clean, keeping fat off the liver, uh, keeping you at a healthy weight. It's also involved with building acetylcholine, which is another very important um, neurotransmitter that your brain uses for various different things. Choline, very important, actually was classified as an essential nutrient in the last 30 years. So you can get this from eating eggs. Another question, do you have any advice on detoxing the kidneys as I have a large as I have large dark spots under my eyes and they're getting bigger. Um, when it comes to cleaning the kidneys, um, I'd focus on eating lots of microgreens uh, like broccoli sprouts, uh, cress, uh, arugula sprouts, citrus fruits, uh, lots of water to flush the kidneys. Very important to drink more water if you have a kidney problem and avoid foods which are high in oxalates like beet tops, and um, spinach. Uh, I, I do plan on doing a kidney health video at some stage as it has been a couple of years since I've done one I think. Can you please research lesser known more potent natural cures for acne scars and dark spots that are not fading over time? This is probably a situation where there's too much insulin in your blood and your collagen isn't reforming properly to repair these scars. Uh, Vitamin C deficiency may be causing this, not having enough antioxidants in your body. You need the real vitamin C complex from foods, not from a supplement, as they don't usually work, or unless it's a fruit powder like acerola cherry. Uh, even vitamin E can help with this. Uh, I like eating things like sauerkraut, broccoli, uh, barely cooked broccoli, uh, lemon juice, fruits things like that to improve the skin health, helping to heal, boost collagen, and also some seafood to get some extra copper in the diet. This can also help. The next one says, hello, right? <laughs> well, hello to you. Um, the next one says, tips to resist cravings. Yes, uh, I did a video uh, a while back on the different types of food cravings and what could be causing them. Um, most of the time it is a blood sugar problem so eating more fat in the diet from uh, even healthy grass-fed saturated fat from things like goose fat um, beef with the fat left on things like that that can help to control your blood sugars and reduce cravings uh, nutritional yeast a good source of vitamin b1 um, even brewer's yeast these can help to control cravings as well, um, especially for things like alcohol, caffeine, withdrawal, B1 from nutritional yeast. That would be the way to go. Sunflower seeds as well. Can creatine be useful in brain function? And if yes, can it be used in paralysis? Um, it can improve cognitive function, I do believe. Um, I don't know much on this particular topic. It may require a little more research from me don't think that it's linked with improving paralysis uh, but again I could be wrong I'm still learning I'm always doing more research I'm always trying to find the best remedies for every situation so I will put that on my list and we may look into that in the future so keep your eyes peeled on the channel now I'm gonna leave it there as far as the questions go um, in terms of the channel we're trying out this new format of questions and answers. I want to connect with you a little bit more on a personal level. As I said, there are a lot of robotic AI channels popping up on YouTube. 
um, they've sort of they sort of ripped off the format from this channel. Um, so it's sort of watering down the content a little bit. So I want you to be aware that I am a real person. I'm not AI. Um, I work with my wife, Hannah. She does all of the drawings for the channel. Not all of the drawings, we get some online, but she does a lot of the drawings and we're building up a good database of these drawings uh, that we can use to illustrate different points about health and biology and things like that. It's difficult for me to produce as many videos as I used to because they're very long now. So um, with the algorithm with YouTube, you have to produce a, a longer video so that you can get into the algorithm or else nobody gets to see it. So I have to make them a little bit lo longer. So I try to pack them with as much information as I can. Sometimes this becomes a little bit too much information. So sometimes I try to cut them back and it's finding this balance. Um, I'm also trying to produce more shorts um, because often people just want to get that info and leave, just get what they need and leave. So I completely understand that. But there is a need to understand what exactly is happening inside your body. If you know what's happening on a fundamental level, you're more motivated and inspired to actually go out, do the work, take the remedies, actually help yourself rather than just giving you the answer. So I'm trying to find a balance between all of this. I uh, had a few comments now asking if I should uh, write a book and that is something that I may look into in the future and I really appreciate your suggestions and um, yeah I'll definitely look into that but again it is finding the time. We are a two-person team running four different social medias and it can be very tiring so we do our best. Um, I hope you enjoyed this questions and answer video today. I do have some more questions. I've kept them. I'll put them in the next video. So don't fear. I will do my best to answer as many as I can. And when I run out, I'll put another post on the community page where you can post your question and we'll keep this going if it works out, if everybody's happy with it. So thank you so much for watching the video. And as always, I wish you great health wealth and ultimate happiness. Thank you.